I believe we are in a season where God wants to do things that are glorious in our lives. Glorious, glorious. There is what we call glorious victory. There's victory that is normal victory. There are things God will do in our lives that are, yes, yeah, supernatural. But when God breaks through with his right hand and his mighty hand, he does things that for years and years, for your generations after you, they'll be talking about it. And uh, there's sometimes I was sharing at the nine o'clock, I said, you know, God, sometimes we, we don't understand God. Two things, God works in seasons. And secondly, there are times God wants to show off. He wants to display. He wants to demonstrate. You know, the Bible says without signs and wonders, this generation will not believe. God himself sometimes likes an avenue. And that's why Pastor Paul's been speaking about his limitless supply. And last week about willing vessels. That if we are willing vessels, there's a limitless supply that can come into our lives. That will bring about an awesomeness of the demonstration of the power and the glory of our God. That people will not doubt whether there is a God or not. But they will see his strong and mighty hand at work in our lives. And as I was praying yesterday, something came to my mind. And I feel it's the Lord speaking to me. And he said, you know, when you preach, you always talk about the next season, what God is going to do, praying into the next season. And, and, and we are, we're entering into a new season. And then I felt God say, I am not about to bring the lighthouse into a new season. I am not going to bring the lighthouse into a new season. I have already started and I have already ushered the lighthouse into a new season. So we are already in the new season. And if you don't have an expectation in this season where we are, that God wants to, I'll tell you what he wants to do. He wants to demonstrate his power. He wants to, you know, sometimes God likes to show off. You think it's only your wife who likes to show off when she dresses. You know, my wife, you know, when we are going for a special location and I haven't seen her, it's not like I didn't see her, but I haven't seen her. And then she said, you haven't said anything. I said, oh, that looks beautiful. <laughs> she wants to show off for me. She wants to show off for the world. And it's great. It's nice sometimes to show off. Come on, women, am I saying anything? <laughs> sometimes it's nice to show off. Let them know that you are wonderfully created, crafted. Back to your message. And so sometimes God likes to show off. And you know, Jesus will come into some cities, heal a, heal a bit of blindness, heal a bit of deafness, heal a bit of lameness. Mother-in-law, not feeling well, Peter, goes in, heal a bit of fever. Then... Lazarus is not feeling well. Jesus says, we are not going to pray for some minor illness. Let it get worse. Let him die. Let him die the death. Then we'll go into a dead, dead situation. And we can demonstrate a bit of the power of God. And so he tarries. Day one passes, day two passes, day three passes. And then on the fourth day, fourth day, he said, Lazarus is sleeping. Let's go wake him up. And when Jesus is in that mood, 
You just like his words. You like what he says. He knows something is about to happen that people will speak about for years and years to come. So he's excited. He's buzzing like I'm buzzing on my inside right now. Because I know that things are about to happen in your life and in my life and in this church, in this season where we are, that people will be talking about it for years to come. I'm serious about that. Anybody believe that with me? Come on. Come on. Come on. You know, and, and then he arrives at Lazarus' tomb. And, and the ranting, the women were ranting. Martha was saying something. Mary was saying, he knew what he was going to do before he left home. And he said, Lazarus, where are you? <laughs> and he that was dead came forth. And they began to speak about it. Wow. What a man. He likes to do things sometimes in our lives. And that's the season we are in. We've been praying as a church. Lord, when people step through that door, will you touch them? Will you change them? Will you transform them? And someone came into our church last Sunday for the first time. And I saw him during the week and he shared with me. He said, my life was changed when I stepped in through that door. I said, we've been praying for years, expecting that God would do things. And this is the season, ladies and gentlemen. Anything is possible if you can believe. Any believers in the house? Any believers in the house? This week alone, I've had some incredible testimonies of what happened last Sunday as the pastors laid hands and prayed for people. And what a boss in the house. And I'm, I'm still waiting for more testimonies. Somebody is getting some favor in their workplaces. Somebody is just going to have a change of fortune. Somebody, your child that has left home is coming back home. Somebody, your broken life is being put together again. Somebody, the oil of joy is coming upon your life. And the morning is leaving you. Because this is the season where God wants to demonstrate and show his power in you your life. Are you ready for a church? The people of Israel, 430 years, were in slavery in Egypt. And God saw them. And God knew they were in slavery and in bondage. And they suffered. And they had hardship. And they had pain. God saw them. But he was waiting for the time, the season, the season, the season. And, and, and when the season came, it transpired that a young boy was born, Moses. And God conspired against the enemy. And the, the, the king of Egypt was killing all the male children born by the Israel family, in Israeli family, uh, Israel nation. And, and he was killing, and God conspired that the same Moses they could have killed was raised up in Pharaoh's palace right under his nose. God really knows how to do things. The same Moses that was going to stand and bring Egypt down to its knees was raised by Egypt itself. Do you know God? Do you really know God? You think you're going through a situation, but God is conspiring against the enemy to set the stage for a glorious victory. Something is about to happen in your life that people will speak about it. A change, a transformation in our city, in our nation. I believe, two weeks ago the Lord spoke to me. He said our young people are going to be battle acts in his hands. The same young people that Facebook is bombarding, Twitter is bombarding, Snapchat is bombarding, all kinds of things are bombarding, but God has the Jesses, the Bianders, the Amandas, the Dominic. He's raising them up as battle axes in his hands and they will use this instrument, this same Facebook, this same Twitter, they will use it to preach the gospel and people will be saved. Do you know God? Do you know God? He uses the same thing that pulls you down to raise you up. That's the way he works. That's
that's the way he works. It's not over for you yet. This is for somebody. It's not over for you yet. God has a great plan for your life. Raise your expectation. Open your heart. The best bit of your life is about to happen. Something from heaven that the world cannot deny. And they said, we don't understand what's happening with her and what's happening with him. We can see that there is a change and a transformation in her life. They used to see you as a, uh, as a drug addict, as a beaten down person. Uh, uh, they used to see you as a nobody. Then God takes you and makes something out of you. And then they wait for you to speak before they do anything. Because uh, he, he takes the poor out out of the dunghill and the dust and makes them to sit among the princes of his people because promotion does not come from the east, from the west, from the south. It comes from God. God is the lifter up of people. It's time for our nation to turn to God and recognize he is God but it's not going to happen until God demonstrates himself and cancer is healed and tuberculosis is healed and people with incurable come through the door and shake the, the, the steward at the door and the power of God flows through them and they get healed they don't need a preaching they say can I be saved I want to be a Christian you know the reason we argue a lot Five reasons why Jesus is the son of God. Ten reasons why the Bible is true. Fourteen reasons why Jesus is coming again. is because you haven't demonstrated God. When you demonstrate him, people say we want him. You understand what I'm talking about? God said, I'm going to show Pharaoh I'm king. I'm going to show Egypt I'm the greatest power. And so, ten plagues were done. Okay? Frogs, all kinds of things happen. And Pharaoh was still arguing with Moses. Pharaoh was still talking to Moses. And said, well, we'll let you go, we won't let you go, we'll let you go, we won't let you go. And God said, I've got a master stroke for him. Let's show him how strong I am. Lead the people out. Moses said, I'll lead them out. Which way, Lord? God said, by the Red Sea. Really? By the Red Sea? There's no path there. God said, I have a path there that you haven't seen and understood. <laughs> God is doing something in our nation today. They don't know what is going on. In our lives today, they don't know what is going on. They think we are foolish, stupid. We don't know what we are doing. Religious people, high-minded. No. This is the time for the kingdom of God to show the glory and the power of God. I'm telling you, church, are you ready for it? Come on, are you ready for it? Who is expectant? Who is expectant? Oh, dear me. Where did I keep my... Oh, yeah, it's all right. Anyway... Where was I? I wanted to share the story of a member of this church. She's here. Permit me to share it. She works in the medical industry. And one day, somebody wasn't feeling well, and she prayed for the person, and she went away. Then they, they, somebody else needed someone else prayed for. So they maneuvered the shift so she will be in work. She wasn't supposed to be in work. Maneuver the shift so she would be in work. And she got to work and said, but I'm not supposed to work today. I said, yeah, we brought you in. We need you to pray for someone who is sick. <laughs> Woo! We heard you pray for so and so. Can you pray for such and such? This is the season God wants to show his power. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? Are we ready for it? And then God said, lead them by the Red Sea. He parted the Red Sea. I'm about finishing. He parted the Red Sea. Split the Red Sea in two. And they walked through the Red Sea. And then the Hittites heard about it. The Gittites heard about it. The Jebusites heard about it. There is a God with a group of people who are coming in our direction. He split the Red Sea. You know the pond behind my house in Bolton. 
if that pond split in two, I will sit down there and be looking for what split it in two for two days, the pond. But God did not split the pond. He split an ocean. He split a sea. He split it in two. And millions of people were walking through it. And you think God cannot change your circumstance? God cannot transform your life? Why do you belittle him? Why do you look down on him? He's God unlimited supply for us. All he needs is my willingness to say, God, here am I. Do what you want to do in my life. And we will be amazed. My last slide, go to expectation. Expectation. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. I heard Israel Houghton singing this somewhere, I think in Asia. And it said, expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And what God is doing in the lighthouses, he's taking our expectation to another level. You know, believe God for something stupid, way, way stupid. I'm not saying something foolish, but something beyond your ability. Something beyond your strength. Something be, be, that nobody in your background, in your family, can ever ascribe to. Believe him for it. And say, God, I believe you. I open my expectant heart up for what you want to do in and through me. I was sharing with someone that at 75, Caleb, at 80, Caleb got a fresh vision. 75, Joseph, uh, Abraham got a, a fresh vision. At, at a very young age, uh, Samuel got a fresh vision. Age cannot stop you. You might be old, you might be young. When God takes a hold of you, he will make you a world changer. Anybody receive that? You ready for that? So no more excuse. I'm a man, it's not an excuse. I'm a woman, it's not an excuse. I'm old, it's not an excuse. I'm too young, it's not an excuse. That's a 19-year-old boy running a conference over the weekend. If he can do it, you can do much more. We are seeing it before our eyes that God is able. If you are willing, God will use you. You understand what I'm talking about? Come on, lift up your hand. I'm done. I'm finished. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord.